MyStat students, we're going to be reviewing the Chapter 23 PowerPoint notes. So it includes several slides for introduction, and then there's two example problems. I probably won't be able to get it all into one 15-minute video, so it's likely we'll do um, we'll have a couple a couple sections. Um, chapter 23, we're talking about comparing means to separate independent samples. In Chapter 22, we looked at um, just mean values and hypothesizing about what the uh, means of distributions would be. Now we're comparing two means. Um, we're going to look at hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. Um, keep in mind that these methods are only appropriate when the groups are independent. We have to know that the groups are independent. Um, by doing that, we're able to get a standard error for a sampling distribution by adding variances. Remember, you can't add standard deviations. And in fact, we're going to find out. We're not going to know what these standard deviations actually are. So in this chapter, we're going to parallel our previous look at inference for two proportions. Um, we're already familiar with the one sample t-test and one sample confidence intervals. So we're basically going to build on those, adapt those, to look at now the difference between two means. And, and, and Keep in mind that it is like a difference that we're comparing like the difference of the two means. Um, so we're going to use numbers where we have a one mean subtracted from another. Sometimes you're going to get negative values. Just make sure you're aware of which way you're doing the subtraction so that when you're describing your results, you have the direction correct. Um, the two groups must be independent. Um, and so that's kind of one of the most important things we need to look at here. In the next chapter, we'll look at groups that are not independent. And in your My Math Lab problems, you're going to encounter some questions that will ask you to um, consider the independence between the two groups and to decide if the two-sample t-test is appropriate or if you need to do something different. Um, when we looked at proportions, we pooled samples to provide the best estimate of our population standard deviation. This was when we were assuming that the null hypothesis, that the two proportions were the same, was being assumed to be true. Um, it may seem log logical to do the same thing here, but the key difference in the difference of proportions and the difference of means is that the population proportion itself determined the population standard deviation. If you remember, uh, the square root of PQ over N is how we determine that. So we use the proportion we knew to figure out the standard error. Um, so equal proportions uh, with populations also implies they have equal variances, same proportions. That doesn't exist with means. The hypothesis of two sets being equal in their means tells us nothing about the standard deviations. So we're going to look at inferences about means when we have two sets of datas, data in these next two chapters. We're going to use t models, t distributions, for, for all of this. And that's where the similarity ends. In this chapter that we're doing now, we have independent groups. Variances will add. In chapter 24, our two groups are paired. And example of that is like looking at before and after conditions. So like if you're studying a diet, you have the same person with a before weight and an after weight. Those two weights are not independent of one another. They've both been influenced by your study, but they are not independent groups. So different situation, not independent. Uh, for that, we'll be unable to add variances, so we're not going to be able to use the methods that we're learning in this chapter. So independence. So it's critical that we start thinking about independence now. Um, it's the vital determining factor in the decision that we're going to soon face. Ultimately, we're going to get all these kind of problems presented at once, and we will have to decide whether Chapter 23 practices or Chapter 24 practices are appropriate. That would be um, in Chapter 3, two sample methods. Um, in Chapter 24, we're going to call them paired T methods. The decision is simply forced by the design of the study. It's not a choice that you make. It's based on the design of the study. Um, we're going to look at a couple of class examples. 
using the familiars that we're, the familiar procedures that we have. We're going to test the hypothesis, but follow it up with a confidence interval. You should be able to write the hypotheses correctly by now. Um, as always, be clear in your notation, be neat, um, use parameters with, um, you know, subscripts that make sense um, in the context of the problem. Might as well make it um, easy to identify what your hypothesis are trying to say. So a little bit more, um, we, we still will have to address assumptions and conditions like we've been doing in the last several chapters. In, in this chapter, since we have two independent groups, we have to check both groups for normal situations. Um, so you'll need two histograms or two normal probability plots, one for each group. Mechanics are the same. Remember to use proper symbols. You want to write out your formula you're using. Use correct notation. Um, fill in the formulas with your values, and then you can use your calculator to crank it out. Some of the stuff that we're going to be doing, we can also use our calculator um, to, to actually run the tests. Um, just make sure you know how to do it kind of by hand, as well as with the calculator. In my math lab work, you can use the calculator every time. Um, you always want to sketch a normal shaped curve or a t distribution shaped curve um, centered on the hypothesized difference usually at zero you're trying to show that two means are um, the same or you're trying to show i guess that they're not the same um, but that's the hypothesis that they are um, then mark your observed difference from your study and then uh, shade the proper tail whether it's uh, the top side or the bottom side um, we have two new things to address. We have degrees of freedom, again, and standard deviation. So degrees of freedom gets a little bit complicated for, for this. Actually, page 607 of your text, if you want to see the big, long formula, you can. But what we're going to do is we're going to use our calculator to run the stats test. It's number four, the two-sample t-test. Um, you can use list one and list two for data, or you can use... Um, a lot of times you'll just enter in averages that you've been given or means that you've been given and then once you run the test it'll it'll spit out for you degrees of freedom so it's kind of the cart before the horse in a way you got to run the test in order to get degrees of freedom to do the test um, but that's okay um, for finding the standard error of the estimate we have to add the variances um, we have to believe that the groups are independent or show that they're independent or hopefully you know there'll be enough in the in the problem to understand that they are independent um, regarding this independence um, there's no really special condition to check you just need to think carefully about how the data were collected okay look at the context of the problem you have to decide um, it's a key point because once we get into the next chapter we're going to have some situations where the data is not independent um, and you have to decide you know what the correct statistical technique is for running your hypothesis test or making a confidence interval and you will again encounter some of this in your math labs so before we begin um, let's think about what our game plan is we're going to evaluate we have to make an evaluation we got to make a decision and then we're going to write up a conclusion um, be sure that the conclusion talks about the means of the populations and the difference of the means of the populations. Um, it is common to mix up some of the things we've done with percentages and proportions from the last unit with um, means. But, I mean, you'll have some examples, just examples in your text on uh, good wording to use. The follow-up confidence interval. Um, one of the interesting things uh, about this is you know, we could make a confidence interval for our first group about what its mean would be. We could make a confidence interval interval about the second group and decide what its mean should be, and we could compare those two confidence intervals. And sometimes that looks like that would be a good thing to do, and it almost makes sense to do that. But, um, oh, and, you know, like if the two intervals overlap, then, it, then that would tell you that their means could be the same. If the two intervals do not overlap, then the means are probably different. Um, this is true, and this will work probably a majority of the time, but the analysis is not precise enough for stats rules. Um, we need to look at 
look for the um, significant difference, we want to look at a single confidence interval for the difference in the two means. If zero is in that interval, it means that the means may be the same. If not, that we can conclude that they're probably different, reject that null hypothesis. This approach, what it will do for you, is it correctly adds the variances of the two groups together in a similar way that we did this um, with proportions. Remember the pooling. All right, so next is an example. I think I'm going to stop this video and pick up with the pulse rate example in its separate video.